location lines per night, greater in virtue than a thousand months. In this month, the law has made what plastic obligatory upon you by the daytime, and the rabir, the sunnah by night. Whoever intends to draw near to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this month and does any good deed, that, that good deed will be rewarded equal to a firm, an obligatory act, and each firm will be blessed and multiplied by 70 times. وَهُوَ شَهْرُ الصَّبْرُ الصَّبْرُ الدَّوَابُ الْجَنَّةِ This is a month of patience, and the reward for true patience is paradise. This is a month of mercy, this is a month of sympathy for fellow human beings, and this is a month in which the true risk and sustenance of the believers is increased. Whoever feeds a fasting person to break the fast, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive his or her sins, and Allah will free him or her from the fire of Jahannam. And Allah will give him or her the same reward as the reward of the fasting person without the reward of the fasting person being decreased in any way. This is a month, the first part of which brings the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the second part of which brings the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the third part brings emancipation freedom from the fire of the Whoever needs a, the companions of Prophet said, a fellow Prophet of Allah, or if you do not have anything to feed a fasting person, Rasulullah said, even if you give a single a mere date, or a glass of water, or a sip of milk, Allah will forgive your sins and free you from the fire of the This is a month of sympathy. This is a month of sympathy for the fellow human beings. Whoever lessens the whoever lessens the burdens of fellow human beings in this month, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive their sins. Allah will free them from the fire of Jahan. Four things you should do in great quantity in this month. Recite La ilaha illallah as much as you can. Beg Allah's forgiveness saying Astaghfirullah as much as you can. And beg Allah's and beg Allah for your entrance into paradise and seek his protection from the fire of Jahannam. Whoever gives a fasting person water to drink, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give him or her water from my fountain on the day of judgment, drinking after which he or she will never feel thirsty again until they enter paradise. What a month, respected listeners, what a month. إِذَا جَاءَ رَمَضَانٌ فُتِحَتْ أَبْوَابُ الْجَنَّةِ وَقُلِّقَتْ أَبْوَابُ النَّارِ وَسُفِنَتِ الشَّيَاطِينِ رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم said when the month of Ramadan comes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala flings open the doors of paradise, locks up the good gates of hellfire, and chains the shayateen. In this month, Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said the breath of a fasting person is more beloved to Allah than the fragrant musk, than the fragrant smell of musk, the fishes in the ocean make dua for the fasting person. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decorates paradise with his own hands every night of the month of Ramadan. What a month, respected listeners. What a month. Two happiness is for a fasting person, said Prophet. One when he or she breaks the fast, and the other when they meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment, passing the entire month of Ramadan. There is a gate among the eight gates of paradise, said Prophet, which is known as Babu Rayyan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make all the fasting people enter to the gate of Rayyan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, O you who believe, fasting has been prescribed to you like those to whom it was, like, like to those who came before you. So that you become pious, so that you become conscientious in the duties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that you become, so, you, so that you become righteous. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is promising us taqwa. 
And that is the that, that is the objective and purpose which you have, not just Ramadan comes and Ramadan goes. There are many people with us last year, they are not with us. Some people we know. There are some people we know who were healthy last year, who are not as healthy this year. They cannot perform the physical duties we perform in our salat and reciting the Quran. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is blessing us and doing us with this month of Ramadan. One of the pious businesses used to make the dua, Allahumma la tahtimna khira ma'inda, bishari ma'indana. O Allah, do not deprive us of the good from all the bad we do, O Allah. Do not deprive us of the good from you, O Allah. Do not grudge, do not complain, O Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you look at ourselves from the last year to this year, respect and distance. From the things we have done from the last Ramadan until now to the end of Shaban. There is no way we deserve another month of Ramadan. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of his infinite mercy, sheer mercy, is blessing us, endowing us, honoring us with another month of Ramadan. The month in which the Quran was revealed, all the Holy Scriptures were revealed. Because of which one of the great pious princes, Al Mujahid Al Fali Rahmatullah, says, if you compare the blessings of the remaining nine months of the year and compare those blessings with the month of Ramadan, the entire blessings of the eleven months put together are just a drop in the ocean in the eyes of the Such a month, respect your listeners. Such a month is going to come and talk, such an opportunity, the, gold, the word golden opportunity seems to be going exactly for the month of Ramadan. Exactly for the month of Ramadan. Such an opportunity is going to come and knock on our doors, respected listeners. If you just go through the rituals like we do every year, it will come and go. But if we exert ourselves, if we exhaust ourselves in this month of Ramadan, little hunger, little tiredness, little thirst, respected listeners, little weakness of the body, when we push ourselves, exert ourselves, we can make up all the shortcomings and all the lapses of the time we did for the entire year. Not only that, Allah will bless us so much with his actions, Amal of Ramadan, because Allah has designed the month of Ramadan. Allah has designed the month of Ramadan, fasting by the day, the Rawih by night, getting up for support, making du'as, reciting the Quran. Allah has designed the month in, in such a way that the person will definitely get taqwa, finding the consciousness of the duties to Allah. Allah has designed it that way. But if you just go, you know, just regular fasting, get on with life, not exerting ourselves, exhausting ourselves, of course we'll get the rewards of fasting. But the essence of fasting, the taqwa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises, that we will not be able to accomplish. Because the main purpose and goal of fasting is the taqwa, the piety of the righteousness, getting close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says people say money can buy a lot of things. Money can buy a lot of things. Money can buy everything, some people say. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, taqwa. With taqwa you can get everything. Whoever has taqwa, whoever fulfills his duties to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will find you or a way out of everything. Allah will find a way out of every difficulty for that person. On Yusri Yusuf Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in Amrihi Yusra, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, whoever has, whoever has taqwa, Allah will make things easy for them. Allah will make life easy for them. The person doesn't have to get stressed out of actions. Wait, does we do what that taqwa is going to do? Allah says a person who adopts patience and who adopts piety and righteousness, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect that person from any evil that comes to that person. Allah will surround that evil to protect this person, Allah says in the Quran. Allah says the person who has patience and taqwa. Allah will send angels to help them. Allah will put peace in their hearts. The verse goes on to say, 
وما جعله الا بشرى لكم اللهم put peace, tranquility in their hearts. وما نسر بالله من عند الله العزيز الحكيم. This is only from the help of Allah سبحانه يا أيها الذين آمنوا حق يا أيها الذين آمنوا تقول الله حق تقاتي ولا تموتون إلا وأنتم مسلمون. Allah سبحانه وتعالى says, O you who believe, O you who believe, do not die except as Muslims, except in the state of iman, submission to Allah سبحانه وتعالى. إن أكرمكم إن إن الله يقاكم أقاكم. The closest to Allah, Allah doesn't look at our faces, Allah doesn't look at our status, our wealth. All Allah looks respected. This is the piety, the righteousness inside us. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu in tataku Allah yu'alaku burbana wa yutafil antum sayyiyatikum wa yaghfir lakum wallahu wa yutafil adhim Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Oh you believe, if you are conscientious of your duties to Allah, if you acquire this piety and righteousness, Allah will give you respect and honor in this world. Allah will give you respect and honor in this world. ولو أن أهل القرى إيمانا واتقوا لفتحنا عليهم أبواب السماوات والأرض. Allah says those who have faith and taqwa, righteousness, Allah will make descents blessings from the heavens and the earth to them. And this is the essence of Ramadan, respected Muslims, to acquire that piety and righteousness Allah wants to give us as a gift for all the exertion. The sacrifices we make in the month of Ramadan, but Allah wants us to exert. when we don't utilize, it goes away. Do we get another opportunity? Do we get another Ramadan after this Ramadan? Only Allah knows. I may not be standing here next year like that woman, Imam Ibn Qayyum al Jawzi writes in this book. Long time ago, hard times came upon the country of Afghanistan. The woman lost her husband. She went with her two little kids all the way traveled to some of the Bukhara region, the former Soviet Union. She goes and knocks on the door of a person. A Muslim man opens the door and she says, Listen, I am a Sayyidah, I am a descendant from the family of Prophet. My husband has died. I have traveled a long distance with little, little, little kids. Would you give me some help? Let me stay for a few days in your house. The Muslim man says, many people say they are Sayyids, Sayyid, the descendants of Prophet Sallallahu What proof do you have of your descendant of the family of Prophet The woman says, I don't have any proof. The man shuts the door on the woman. The opportunity that came knocking on his door, he shuts the door on. That night he has a dream. In the dream he sees a magnificent palace in paradise. Outside the palace, He's standing Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa The man asks, O Prophet of Allah, whose palace is this? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, This palace belongs to a Muslim. The man says, I'm a Muslim, O Prophet of Allah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, What proof do you have that you're a Muslim? The man wakes up in shock from his dream, shaken up. He goes in search of the woman and kids. Finally finds out that she's staying at a house of a fire worship. Me. He goes and knocks on his door very frantically. The man opens the door. The Muslim man says, Please return the woman and children to me. They are my honored guests. The fire worshiper says, No, no. She's not coming to your place. She's my guest. She can stay in my house with her kids as long as she wants. And he says, Because last night I had a dream. I saw a magnificent palace in a dream. And inside the door of the palace, I was standing and you were standing outside the door of the palace. 
that the Prophet of Allah, whom I love, I love your Prophet. And he was standing outside the door and was really upset. And after seeing the dream, I have read the Shahada of a Muslim now, this woman is my guest. He took advantage of the opportunity that came on his door. This month of Ramadan, Allah is bringing us with the opening of the floodgates of his mercy and forgiveness to us. He's going to open up the floodgates of his forgiveness, of his mercy, acceptance of du'as, sweetness of iman, taking us away from the distractions and the shackles and the deceptions of this world to the indulgence and the sweetness of iman. There's only one corner of the universe, respected listeners. Only one corner of the entire universe we can change. There is no one but our own selves. And Allah is blessing us to change ourselves in this month of Ramadan. He is coming to change our lives. Not just ritual fasting every month of Ramadan, every year comes and goes. As readily it comes with the ready-made opportunities, respected listeners, it also comes with ready-made distractions. The uncrowned king and the undisputed champion of today's day and age is the social media. At least in the month of Ramadan, even America, respected listen, America, all the Western countries are describing the ills and the addiction and the harms of the social media. How much time it takes away from us? How can we, even at the blessed time of school or in the state of fasting, waste away our time on the social media, which is not going to help us much at all, except for, you know, at least for Ramadan. Turn off the social media, respected listeners. Turn on the electricity and the blessings of Ramadan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala confirm in this month of Ramadan our freedom and emancipation of the fire of Jahannam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with the eternal guards of paradise. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us value the month of Ramadan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us make, make this the best Ramadan of our life, respected listeners. May Allah make us exert in the month of Ramadan. One exertion which we do in the month of Ramadan is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa told us to break your fast as soon as the fasting time is, as soon as the sun sets. When it's time to break the fast, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, break the fast, do not delay breaking the fast. And we do that, all of us do that, alhamdulillah. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, at the time, suhoor time, eat late till the suhoor time, eat at the end of the suhoor time, not beyond the suhoor time, eat at the end of suhoor time. Those two things, respectively, this is we do, and what does Allah do? وَالَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا فِيهَا لَنَهْدِيَهُمْ سُبُلًا وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَمَعَ الْمُحْسِنِينَ Those who exert themselves in our way, we guide them. We open up the avenues of guidance for them. And Allah loves those. Allah is with those who do things to the best of their ability. May Allah make us among those who do our good amal, recitation of the Quran, making du'as, doing zikr, reading salat, taking advantage of the nights of Latin Qadr to the best of our ability. Rabbana atina fi dunya